if you've gotten this far with me thanks for hanging in there and we are in the protein of it <laughs> okay because you see that Jesus was left out and Muhammad is there Muhammad was the founder of something but it's not recognized that Jesus was the founder of the reign of the heavens that he established any type of um, code to live by constitution or a law our country nation discipline life way but neither are the Native Americans they are not in there either they weren't set up as a state and perhaps what Yeshua was establishing was not considered a state but there are millions of followers who then are not under a entity to be recognized as a people with international law or security correction I showed it to you Christians the world entity that represents is the Catholic Church the ecumenical ministries has to be done by the Pope that's the Christian world representation they are <laughs> some kind of a person not a person they've given themselves up in obedience let's go to Paul actually let's start with Tacitus the only historian who has some animal annals that exist left the ones that came between a more relevant period of Jesus life are missing I've read but these, this one remains where it says Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures to on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of the procurators, Pontius Pilate, and a most mischievous superstition thus checked for the moment, again broke out not only in Judea and the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become popular. Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty, then upon their information an immense multitude was convicted not so much of the crime of firing the city as of hatred against mankind. Mockery of every sort was added to their deaths, covered with the skins of beasts they were torn by dogs and perished or were nailed to crosses or were doomed by the flames and burnt to serve as a mighty illumination when daylight had expired Nero offered his gardens for the spectacle and was exhibiting a show in the circus while he mingled with the people in the dress of a charioteer or stood aloft in a car hence even for criminals who deserved extreme and exemplary punishment there arose a feeling of compassion for it was not it seemed for the public good but to glut one man's cruelty that they were being destroyed it was not for the public good because these were not bad people they were not criminals okay back to Matthew where Jesus an account of Jesus in 24 and going out Yahushua went away from the set apart place and his taught ones came near to point out to him the buildings of the set apart place and Yehoshua said to them, Do you not see all these? Truly I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another, at all which shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the taught ones came to him separately, saying, Say to us, When shall this be? And what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Set apart place. The buildings are going to come down. Set apart place set apart place and buildings of the set apart place Romans and Romans 15 verse 25 Paul says but now I am going to Jerusalem to serve the set apart ones and also in verse 31 that I might be delivered from those in Yehuda who do not believe and that my service for Jerusalem be well received by the set apart ones and Jerusalem was where that set apart place was Yeshua spoke of Jerusalem 
and the Elohim of peace be with you all. Amen. So, I think when I read Romans now, and I would have read more because there's a lot of places in there where it's very clear to me that set apart ones has, has become set apart place, has become set apart spirit, and they're killing us, and we're setting up our churches, and finally religion was made legal, and it was about uh, being citizens. He told them, stay, you know, here, I'm going there, and there was a whole process going on where... Um, followers, the early followers, everything's changed and Apostle has worked this out into a situation where um, they can have their belief and they can have their citizenship and not be killed. Now we have Apostle Paul who lived around 10 AD and he says, and if we died with Messiah we believe that we shall also live with him. For in that he died, he died to sin once for all, but in all in that he lives, he lives to Elohim. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body to obey it in its desires, neither present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but be present yourselves to Elohim and being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to Elohim. So my brothers, you also were put to death by the Torah, through the body of the Messiah for you to become another another's the one who has raised you raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to Elohim for when we were in the flesh the passions of sin through the Torah were working in our members to bear fruit to death but now we have been released from the Torah having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in oldness of letter But if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of Elohim dwells in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Messiah, this one is not his. Who shall separate us from the love of the Messiah? Shall pressure or distress or persecution or scarcity of food or nakedness or danger or sword? As it has been written, for your sake we are killed all day long we are reckoned as sheep of slaughter. But in all this, we are more than overcomers through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor messengers, nor principalities, nor powers, neither the present nor the future, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, which is in Messiah, Yeshua, our Master. I speak the truth in Messiah, I do not lie, my conscience also bearing me witness in the set apart spirit. Now it's a spirit with Paul. With Jesus, it was a place. And we have this infamous place where Romans 13 says, Obey your government rulers. All of you must obey the government rulers. Everyone who rules was given the power to rule by God, and all those who rule now were given the power to that power by God. So anyone who is against the government is really against something God has commanded. Those who are against the government bring punishment to them on themselves. People who do right don't have to fear the rulers, for those who do wrong must fear them. Do you want to be free from fearing them? Then do only what is right and they will praise you. That is so interesting because we just saw where Yahushua said um, to call no one a leader that is on earth. Your one leader is Yeshua. But right here we're trying to not get killed in Romans. I don't and and we shouldn't have to worry about that now and we know how to create a state and a nation. Isn't that interesting? And so a Christian is no longer out of the sinful country but is only out of the central country by baptism and when Jesus was alive they were getting out of the central country <laughs> that's the way I see it and what I don't understand is that we see this persecution being tolerated and accepted and I actually um, my preacher said one day that maybe Christians need some persecution to get back to what it means to only have God well, I've only had God a lot in my life, and I don't want my children to be persecuted. And the fact is, at the time 
the, the people were exiles and they had no country and they had no government after Jesus died. They had no set apart place. They're not a state. They are community and they share their belongings and live by the constitution that Yeshua laid out for them. So they were vulnerable because they had no country, they had no state. Just like Native Americans had no state and they were not obligated to pay taxes if they were exiles and not citizens. So they were killed, they were murdered, they were useless because we saw how in Aristotle's politics people without a state are viewed you're either a beast or a god if you have no state so Native Americans like early Christians had no state and they are not in the citizenium.org's timeline of political philosophy is it because they didn't pay taxes or because they had no state because they certainly had political thought they had political philosophy they had political history. They had a way of organizing themselves and governing. Yeshua laid that out. The Native Americans certainly had their councils and meetings and methods of governing themselves. They simply were not a state. Okay, that sums up my topic on exile and prejudice. I finally completed something. I hope you got through it with me, and I hope that the information is valuable to you in your life. I know it is to me because I want to make very well-rounded decisions for my children and their future as we watch this U.S. fiasco. Um, it's just so uh, much idolatry and bizarre behavior and such a mess and are we do we have a state we have no documents making us residents of a state and now I understand there's some creature of statute the state is created by statute on paper and that's not the original state it's like all caps state instead of uppercase and lowercase and you know what people think all this stuff is just hocus pocus and you can't understand it but you know what it was in scripture okay it was in scripture and it was in all the works of the great philosophers and we just aren't haven't been reading it general population has seen education as something that excludes the greatest knowledge of humankind that's education everything but our journey through political thought isn't that interesting i hope y'all have enjoyed have a great week